policy advisor at Compassion in World Farming. Uh, welcome to the programme, Peter. Th this, uh, this documentary that was put out by Panorama, some of the scenes in it were really quite shocking. Um, is that representative? Um, no, I don't think anybody's trying to suggest that every farmer behaves as, as in this brutal manner that, that, that was seen in the panorama with, with cows being kind of kicked and, 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 and beaten. Uh, but that, it's clear there are a proportion of farmers like that. And, you know, we regularly over the years do see exposés of, of farm animals being treated badly. But no, of course, it's not every farmer. But remember, the programme, in addition to that brutality, showed some what I'd call systemic problems. Uh, it, it looked, for example, the way that the calves are separated from the cow, you know, within hours of birth. R remember, for, for a cow to produce milk, she has to have a calf. Uh, and that calf is traditionally taken away from her so that all the cow's milk can go into, you know, for human consumption. And yet... Many farmers themselves recognise that that process for both the cow and the calf is immensely distressing. Uh, so that's a, a really big problem within the dairy industry. There are a, a handful of farmers who are trying to tackle it. And on the very positive side, the programme showed uh, a, a Scottish farm called the Ethical Dairy, where the farmer actually leaves the cow, the calves with the mother, with the cow, till they're five months old. Uh, which means he loses an awful lot of milk. Uh, I mean, some of them, the, the, the cow is still milked, but only once a day. So some milk is going for human consumption, but as a lot is going to the calf. But it's, an, it, you know, it's a much more humane system. And when, when, we, when we look at how rural communities are responding to this documentary, I have seen quite a few uh, people who work on farms who, who feel like this particular documentary really did a disservice, that, uh, that, that some media uh, based in London cannot really understand what it's like in our rural communities. How can we do a better job of representing the many farmers who do have compassion and care at the heart of what they do? Um Right, I think organisations like Compassion and World Farming very much do highlight those farmers who are really doing a good job. I've mentioned the ethical dairy. There's another group of farmers called Pasture Promise who they've set their own standards and they say to be a member of the Pasture Promise and use their logo, their cows have to be out on pasture for at least 180 days of the year. Because this is another big problem. We're seeing the, the UK dairy sector more and more going over to zero grazing. Uh, probably at least 20% of cows are now zero grazed. That means they're never going outside. Now, whereas of course car, cows need to be indoors during bad weather and during the winter, they should be out on pasture during the grass growing season in spring and summer. And yet that we're decreasingly moving away mm. from that. So yes, there are some good farmers, but there are some very real problems mm. uh, in the livestock sector. And particularly we're talking about the dairy sector. Uh, the, 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 the Panorama programme quite accurately pointed out that about 30% of, of, of cows are lame. Now, this is immensely painful. These are big animals. And if you can imagine all that weight bearing down uh, on, onto lame legs, mm. that is immensely painful. So no, we, we mustn't tar all farmers with, with the same brush of, of the brutality we saw on that particular farm, but we must recognize that there's some very serious systemic mm. problems in the dairy sector. And we, part of the problem is there is no legislation protecting dairy cows. We have very detailed legislation for pigs, for chickens, for laying hens, even for the calves. 